Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom. I am Simisola Atigun. The Supreme Court has temporarily restrained the federal government from banning the use of the old Naira notes from February 10, 2023. A seven-member panel of the Apex Court, led by John Okoro, made the ruling on Wednesday in an ex parte application brought by three uh, states, Kaduna, Kogi and Zamfara. The court further held that the federal government, CBN, commercial banks, must not continue with the deadline pending the determination of a notice in respect of the issue on February 15. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it will work with the Lagos State Parks Management Committee for the distribution of election materials and personnel in the state. INEC Resident Electoral Commissioner in Lagos, Ulusha Gumabaje, spoke on Tuesday during the Interagency Consultative Committee on Election Security Meeting at the Commission's office in Lagos. Agbaje said working with a committee led by Musilio Akinsoya, popularly known as MC Oluomo, would not compromise the elections. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company, NNPC Limited, has apologized to Nigerians for the over three months of pains caused by the nationwide fuel scarcity. The group CEO, NNPCL, Mele Kiari, who spoke during an interview on television on Tuesday, assured the public that the glitch will be resolved to everyone's relief. Kiari also expressed a strong belief that the relief will be felt within the next one week. The Australian government has said it will roll out its fifth dose of COVID-19 vaccine later this month to all citizens aged 18 and above who have not contracted coronavirus or have been vaccinated in the past six months, Health Minister Mark Butler said on Wednesday. The decision expands eligibility for the booster shot to include about 14 million people, more than half of the country's population, who will be offered Omicron variant-specific vaccines from February 20. In business, the federal government has disbursed over 16.8 billion naira as grants and conditional cash transfers to more than 2 million Nigerians since the commencement of the CCT program in 2016. According to the latest data obtained from the Ministerial Performance Scorecard of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in Abuja on Tuesday, a total of 2,295,000 325 citizens benefited from the CCT and the grants. Philippines President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has arrived in Japan on Wednesday for a visit that is expected to pave the way for closer security ties with Tokyo as Manila increasingly sides with the United States in its regional tussle with China. Marcos and Prime Minister Fumio Kishida are expected to deepen cooperation in disaster relief, a possible precursor to establishing a broader legal framework that would allow Japanese forces to deploy to the Philippines more easily. Marcos' first visit on Wednesday comes after he signed an agreement last week granting the United States greater access to its military bases. And in sports, LeBron James eclipsed Karim Abdul-Jabbar as the most prolific scorer in the National Basketball Association history on Tuesday, breaking a 39-year record that many believed would never be beaten. The Los Angeles Lakers star playing in his 20th season in the NBA passed Abdul-Jabbar's long-standing total of 38,387 points after nailing a 21-foot shot late in the third quarter against the Oklahoma City Thunder. Abdul-Jabbar, sitting courtside, was among the first to congratulate James as play was interrupted to salute an iconic moment in NBA history. Well, that's all on the newsroom at this time. Thank you for watching.